Hey everyone, so today I have a game for you by Xiaoming. Uh, he is the rank one Chinese LPL super server player. He's considered to be easily one of the best uh, solo queue top laners in the entire world. And today we are looking at one of his games played on Darius. Darius is one of his signature champions and one of the most played champions on his account. And he is playing into Set. Now Set into Darius is definitely more so uh, set favored than Darius favored. I would say in terms of meta top laners that are bruisers and that aren't actually ranged champions, uh, probably the only melee champion that has a, a better win rate into Darius would be Fiora. Now, Darius generally struggles a lot against bruisers like Jax, Fiora, and Set because these champions either slow down his passive stacking and make it so that they actually just kill him before he actually gets to five stacks and gets to a point where he can really abuse those five stacks. So that's why Set does so well uh, into Darius. So in this matchup, he starts D shield and uh, one HP pot to be able to sustain up. Now Set does something that pretty much every single Set player can do, which is he just walks up on you and just starts slapping the shit out of you. Um, he's a Set player. He's got his fists and he just punches the shit out of you. That's He just takes his big fat set and slaps you across with it. Now in this trade, he's actually tanking three to four minions at a time. And despite that, he still comes out like fairly okay on the trade. Had he not taken that uh, those two extra cues, set would be in a much stronger position. Now, one thing that set does that I really like into any champion with uh, a dot on it is he, instead of going for the HP pot that he has in his inventory immediately. What he does is he waits until all of the dots stop ticking. Now items like Dorn Shield and runes like Second Wind, what they do is they heal you based off of missing HP. So when you have less HP, you, you just get more health. And when you have a bleed on you, that cooldown or that effect gets refreshed every single time you're bleeding. And so you actually get a lot more HP back if you don't pop your health pot immediately. Overall, over the course of this game, I would say he's getting around maybe ha like one to half an auto attack worth of HP, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in a close 1v1, that is very significant. So now he pops his HP pot and he comes back in for a trade. Now, one thing that you can do that basically nullifies Darius in this matchup is set is you can pull Darius as uh, he's using his Q. Now, this is exactly what the set tried to do right here. Fortunately, he misses. But even though he fucked that up, he's like, look at that trade. Darius was a, like maybe 100, 200 HP up on him at that point. He still comes up real, like relatively ahead uh, in that trade, which is why it's just so set favored. Now, one of the weaknesses of a champion like set who has a really good early game and just starts autoing you and railing you in the early game is that the minions are hitting set instead of set's minions. And so Darius's minions get an advantage, which is why his wave is now pushing up. And so Xiaoming, he's 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 really just looking to scale up at this point. Maybe he'll land on another Q. He he wants to just win this uh this this lane of sustain. And at this point, it's really hard for Set to go win on him because uh, he doesn't really have uh, a lot of good ways to be able to. He doesn't actually have any kill pressure on him here. Um, so it's not really a good reason for him to go in. But uh, he he pops his ghost. He pops his flash. And he says, uh, that just chill here. He doesn't have W. W for set at level one is roughly a 20, 24 second cooldown. And it is huge. So he just goes in, gets that 1v1 execution, uh, takes the kill. One mistake he does make here is that he actually pops Q uh, before he dies. And that kills about three to four extra minions on set side, which denies himself about three or four minions and in exchange he gets one minion back so arguably that's kind of a big mistake because he would be up another three minions here but Xiaoming wants to go for a pretty big item here so he can so by getting that last minion he does get to to wait slightly longer now what a lot of people would do here was uh, if they were playing Darius is they might buy something like boots or they might buy D items or perhaps they just go into Sheen and start going for maybe uh, Divine Sunder or something like that uh, instead, what Xiaoming does is he decides to go for a Warden's Mail tech. Now, Warden's Mail is probably the tankiest armor item that you can get on a single item. Now, arguably, you could say that Bramble's Vest is a little bit better because it, it has um, has Grievous Wounds attached to it. But uh, in terms of just raw damage negation, like nothing really beats Warden's Mail. Like Warden's Mail is just by far the best. And so this is something that's really important to Darius because... Uh, in this matchup, usually Set just does so much damage that Darius doesn't get to really hit five stacks and then start trading with Set. 
And so by getting this uh, extra armor, he is actually able to contest now. Now, Set hits level 5 first, so he has a really good reason to engage. Uh, but despite that, uh, Xiaoming still continues to trade with him and actually trades up on him now. Like, that, that one item difference of just being significantly more tanky, the item is uh, just completely turned the fight around and completely turned this matchup around to a point where Set can't actually even engage on Darius now. Before, he was just walking up through the minion line, and now he can't actually even fight him. So this one small tech can just change the entire course of a game. So just remember that, you know, while you can go on like pro builds or something and look at like what is the most optimal uh, itemizations, uh, sometimes in certain matchups, just buying one little difference in your build uh, can just completely swing a matchup. So right here, he's just looking to scale. He's not looking to actually engage on the set because that would uh, lose his advantage. Udyr comes in for the gank and he tags him but doesn't actually uh, get it. Now, at this point in the trade, what most top laners are thinking is, oh, the the jungler just came in, he wasted his time, he's just he's just completely useless now. My, uh, If you look at the minimap, the Kha'Zix is going down to bot side and he's going to make a play there. Everything is already winning for Xiaomi. He doesn't actually need to do anything else now. But Xiaomi isn't that kind of player. He's not the type of player to just take a small advantage. He wants big advantages. So what he does here instead is he actually taunts the Udyr and Udyr lands another stun on him and then Set lands a pull on him and the fight begins. So he, instead of immediately using all of his uh, abilities, what he does is he, he tags Udyr with two autos and then uses his full combo to be able to hit five stacks. Now, he actually says here, had Udyr been just not had had he just not had boots he would have been able to tag Udyr with one more auto attack and Udyr would have actually died here so it was very very close here and thanks to the warden's mail he actually does get to live here uh which makes a really really big difference so uh overall like had he not had warden's mail here had he not been uh deciding to pressure here uh, the Kazakhs would not feel so safe to go for uh, a bot lane play because Udyr is not only out of the game, or not only out of top lane, but he's pretty much out of out of the entire jungle. He's too low to really do anything. Uh, his only option here is to either go for Crab if it's still up, which it likely isn't, or if he's got Honey Plant and go heal up a little bit and maybe take uh, Kazakhs' Raptors. But overall, he's not really going to get much out of this now. Unfortunately for Xiaoming, he's obviously too low to go for these minions. Um, Set's obviously looking to dive him. Uh, it's still very hard with Warden's Mail because uh, even though he only has 250 HP, uh, it's still a lot of HP uh, in comparison. Set doesn't have ultimate anymore, so he can't really just execute the, the Darius anymore. Now this is a really fun interaction where Xiaoming knows that Set looks to pull him, and that's exactly what he does, but they just trade spots. And Xiaoming immediately goes for a Q to be able to heal himself back out of Ignite kill range. And one of the most really clean things that he does here is he just, he tags the set with a W and sidesteps the set punch at the same time, which is so important because that extra W slow not only makes sure that he uh, he's out of range for another auto attack, but also makes sure that he's able to keep set under tower just long enough so that even if he doesn't die from the bleed, he will guarantee take one more tower shot and it is just such a beautiful execution in a really bad matchup you can see like how many mistakes the set makes and despite that Zhao Ming still uh, comes out on top because he just outplays him so we're gonna fast forward a little bit here now overall you know at this point what set's doing is he's roaming because he can't actually stay in lane against Darius he doesn't have an ultimate uh, he doesn't really have the ability to be able to kill him 1v1 anymore and so just being down a level in the top lane is massive because bruisers just have the most base stats of any other champion. For Set, he needs to be able to find something, which he does. But Xiaoming, you know, all, all he can do at this point, you know, uh, what I see a lot of top laners doing when they see their other top laner roaming is like, oh, the, the allies are paying them because, you know, he, what's the Set doing in my lane? But like, who cares? Who cares what he's doing? It's like, you see him in his lane, like this is, this is what he's doing. You know, Xiaoming, he's just getting a, an advantage for himself. And he knows that with an extra gold and with an extra EXP um, uh, bonus, he's going to be able to carry this game eventually no matter what. So we're going to fast forward through this game. A lot of things things happen. This is, this is a Chinese super server game. So everybody's egotistical. Everybody's looking to prove themselves. And 
Um, everybody's doing like a lot of dumb shit throughout this entire game, which is very fun to watch and uh, not not necessarily a great learning experience because you know it's basically just a bunch of fiesta plays uh, going on throughout. Now, I want to highlight a really important moment in this game, uh, which is the point where Set gets Bork. Uh, even though Xiaoming is fairly ahead, he's 20 CS up. Uh, they're even levels, so in theory, Xiaoming should be uh, stronger than Set, but because he's completed Bork, um, Xiaoming just does not stand a, a, a fucking chance against him. Like, just, just looking at this damage, like, he, he's got no shot. Like, he could just straight up stand there and auto him and press W, and Darius wouldn't win that. That's that's just the power of Bork set. That's the power of how, you know, one item can just completely change this matchup. And due to the fact that Xiaoming bought Warden's Mail uh, early on, he's actually down 1,000 gold uh, due to the fact that he went for a, an early tech item. And so that means he gets his Divine Sunder uh, slower than set. So he needs to be able to just sort of understand that, watch out. And he actually says uh, in the game, oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, ch ch chill, chill. I shouldn't be fighting you. So just, you know, understanding, like, just because you're stronger in the early game does not necessarily mean that you're going to be stronger throughout the entire game, right? Like, just just one item can really make or break a champion. And for set, Blade of the Rune King, it doesn't really get much better than that. It's it's It really is, like, like one of the single best items for a champion uh, in the entire game, so... So moving along, Xiaoming is taking his tower because his jungler is topside and he has prior, but his enemy team is looking to make a play on him. And Leona comes in for the 2v2, but she gets tagged with the Ash Arrow. Now, one really important thing that he does here is instead of using his combo, instead of using his pull, what Xiaoming does is he just starts tagging her with autos. So his combo is auto, uh, auto W, Q, auto, pull, auto. That guarantees, due to the stun that got hit, uh, that pretty much guarantees that the Leona would have five stacks. That guarantees an execution on a squishy support like Leona. And that pretty ma much makes sure that he's able to execute the rest of the team here as well. So it's really important that, you know, when you're playing something, something like Darius, you want to get as many free autos in as possible so that you can get as many stacks as possible. Had he pulled Leona in at the beginning there, it's not guaranteed that he would have actually been able to hit uh, those five stacks and been able to get all those executions. It, it doesn't feel like a big difference, but trust me, it is a massive difference between him getting three kills there and him actually getting nothing there, which is just properly timing and properly going for the combo in the correct sequence here. I'm actually going to skip forward to the point where Xiaoming actually just wins the game because he actually just avoids the 1v1 against the set for the rest of the game. What he does is he just pushes minion waves and then uh, farms jungle and groups with his team. Uh, he doesn't really look to fight a, a set in a 1v1 because it's, it's not very likely that he would win even with all these items. It's not very likely that he would even be able to carry the game had, had he just won, won a few 1v1s because Darius isn't actually very good at split pushing and pushing out uh, objectives. So so skipping ahead to about 28 minutes, if you look at the board, uh, Xiaoming's team is slightly behind just because of the fact that uh, they are they don't really scale very well. Kha'Zix's like okay scaling, but he's an assassin. Renekton doesn't scale very well. Darius is sort of mediocre scaling, but not really that good. Um, and on the enemy team, you know, no one's really super fed except for the Kai'Sa throughout the entire skirmishes. Uh, she got a lot of the shutdown kills. She got a lot of the just the pickup kills, and she's got pretty much a full full build at this point. And so, you know, she is going to shred Xiaoming if if he comes in. And looking at this point, you know, I would say this is when Darius really starts to fall off. He doesn't really get any stronger than this. He's going for a death stance, but really at the end of the day, he's not really going to get too much tankier, and he's not really going to do too much more damage. So at this point, it's sort of make or break for his team. Dragon's coming up. It's in 12 seconds. It's not Drag Soul. Neither team is very close to Drag Soul at this point. But his team does have Pryo for, uh, from a previous skirmish, and so they're able to get there first. Now, as soon as his team goes in for the uh, Dragon, the enemy team, what they do is they start pinging towards Nash. You can already see Kaisa moving towards it, and you can see Xiaoming, he himself is pinging towards it as well. So as, as soon as they do the do the dragon, everybody just starts piling in on the Nash. Xiaoming is like, oh yeah, of course they're going to do Nash here. Uh, Leona presses R just to be able to buy some time. But now here is a really awkward position. 
Now, there's a few options for Xiaoming's team. They could either force the engage and go for a 5v5 with the enemy team having Baron. Now, Baron gives you extra AD and AP, so it's not super advisable that you fight somebody uh, with Baron buff, but Set is half HP, so there is some level of potential to be able to win this fight. Uh, another bigger reason is that Leona just used her ultimate to be able to stall out the fight, which means that um, she's just a meat shield at this point. She's not really going to be doing too much outside of just CCing one person. So there is a pretty good chance that Xiaoming could go in for a fight here. Now Xiaomi has Ghost and Flash. So he sees Kaisa and he sees Malzahar and his entire team is here. So in theory, he could just press both of these buttons and then pull Kaisa and Malzahar in and start the fight that way. That's not necessarily the best way to do it. And I'm gonna show you what he does. Although he has the opportunity to flash on Kaisa and Malzahar here, he doesn't actually go for it. What he does is he actually goes top here and he goes for the 1v1 on the set. And he completely ignores the backline for a period of time. And he burns all of his abilities, all of his auto attacks, and focuses his entire attention on this single set. Why does he do this? Well, Darius is not necessarily, you know, he's a very tanky champion. And tanky champions are generally considered and thought of to be ones that go in first and to start the fight and to start the engage. But that's not really what Darius is good for. Darius is not known for his five-man pulls. He's known for his five-man executions, right? The only way that you're really gonna be able to get these effectively is to be able to hit five stacks of your passive. So what you really want is a 1v1 within a 5v5, and that's exactly what he gets here. So he gets the 1v1 with, with the set, he gets him low enough that he's able to get the execution, and his team has been doing damage this entire time. So he gets an, an extra free uh, reset on the Leona, uh, Malzahar stalls out a little bit here with Zanyas, but he's able to just press R and dunk him as well. Um, and he's able to just completely clean up the rest of his fight uh, due to the fact that he's Darius and he was able to get his first execution, which is so important throughout this entire process. Uh, it would have been a pentakill had Kazakhs not pressed Q there. Uh, he kind of sits there and mauls a little bit. But um, he, he essentially wins the fight for them because he's not engaging on, on the back line. Like, Engaging on the back line is not necessarily always the correct play. Like people say, oh, why didn't you go for the squishiest champion? Why didn't you go for the... That's not always the best thing to do. And in this case, going for someone who was lower HP, who was not going to deal a ton of damage on the Darius. Because if you looked at Kaisa's items, she has Giant Slayer. She has five items. Like she's going to tear through Xiaoming. And she doesn't give a fuck if he has a, a random zone. That's nothing to her at this point. You know, if she, if she buys like... If, if Malzahar just presses R and then she presses autos on him a few times... Like, he's dead. Like, there's there's no way that he's going to be able to survive that long. And that's really what makes Xiaoming a, a really good player, is that he's able to find these 1v1 situations. He's able to find uh, these crucial fights to be able to win out in the late game. And that's really what makes a good top laner, is how well can you, can you team fight? And in the last team fight, he gets his stacks. He goes solely on Leona, he dunks him, and uh, he, it's just a chase at this point, you know, because everybody's like, oh, fuck, I don't, I don't want to be the guy. I don't want to be the guy that gives Darius another reset. I don't want to be, you know, that person that, that just loses the fight for my for, for my team. Um, but Xiaoming, he's, he's just too good at team fighting. And uh, at this point, you know, Kazakhs could take another Penta, but uh, this time he decides to give it over to Xiaoming. And he says, thank you for not being rude. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's the most important thing here to learn is that for a champion like Darius, it's not necessarily always correct to go for the most important target, but a lot of times it's just important to go for the easiest target that you can get to be able to reset on the, on the entire team. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you wanna check out Xiaoming's stream, I'm gonna put a link into the description. I will warn you that it's on a, uh, on a site that gives many, 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 many ads. So you have been forewarned, um, but he is a very good player and a very good streamer. So I hope you enjoyed that video and thanks for watching.